In today's video, we're going to be talking about Raylar or Cariprazine. And this medication was actually requested by many of you. And so you're going to learn today everything that you need to know about Raylar and whether or not Raylar may be the right medication for you. So stay tuned. Starting with number one, what is Vralar or Cariprazine? Well, Vralar is actually a second generation antipsychotic or an atypical antipsychotic, and to some may even be referred to as a third generation antipsychotic. And it works by partially agonizing or having partial agonism on dopamine 2 and dopamine 3 receptors, as well as serotonin 5-HT1A receptors. And this partial agonism, as I discussed with some of the other atypical antipsychotics, actually can help with turning dopamine or serotonin on or turning it off when needed. So it acts like a dimmer switch, turning it up or turning it down. However, with Vralar, it actually binds more potently to dopamine 3 or D3 receptors, more so than the D2 receptors. And this partial agonism of the D3 receptors is very unique and is even said to bind to these D3 receptors more than our own dopamine as well. And this mechanism actually has two primary functions. Number one, it actually allows for more dopamine to be available in the prefrontal cortex. And this helps with improving our mood, our symptoms of depression, and also improving cognition. And the second way that this D3 or dopamine 3 partial agonism works is by allowing less dopamine or, or inhibiting dopamine in the limbic areas of our brain, which is where if it's too stimulated, you can get psychosis or even manic behaviors or even substance-like behaviors. And so when we inhibit dopamine in this area specifically of the brain, we actually help improve those mood symptoms and bipolar mania to help with mood stabilization and also with regulating emotions. It may also have some stabilizing effects in the reward center of our brains because our reward center is right there in the limbic system as well. And this can have some effect on substance abuse and helping to reduce um, cravings for substances. And so Vralar actually has the most potency on the D3 receptors and the, and the most uh, partial agonism than any of the atypical antipsychotics, which makes it very unique. It also blocks the 2A receptors just like a lot of the other atypical antipsychotics and this action actually helps to improve dopamine in the central brain regions and this may actually help reduce motor side effects um, as well as may improve cognition and also um, the negative affect or blunted affect that some patients with schizophrenia may have. And so number two, what is Vralar used for? Well, Vralar was initially FDA approved in 2017, and it's been approved for the treatment of schizophrenia in adults, as well as the treatments of manic and mixed manic episodes in bipolar one disorder, as well as the treatment of bipolar one depression. Then in December of 2022, so just last year, um, Vralar was actually approved as an adjunct treatment to major depressive disorder, so very similarly to Rigzulti and Abilify. But it also has many off-label uses, and so these off-label uses include things like other psychotic disorders, behavioral disturbances in children, adolescents, and even in patients with dementia, though there are some risks with that, as well as disorders associated with problems with impulse control, uh, PTSD, and comorbid substance abuse disorders. And so number three, how long does Vralar take to work? Well, when you're looking at those psychotic symptoms, manic symptoms, and even depressive symptoms, you'll actually see benefit within one week. And those benefits continue on and may improve even more over four weeks. However, some patients may need up to six weeks to get the full benefit of this medication for treating either schizophrenia, bipolar, or depression. And this is while taking therapeutic dosages, which range from 1.5 milligrams to six milligrams. And in adjunct treatment for depression, usually the 1.5 milligram does just fine. And with bipolar disorders, you may need to go up to three 
sometimes six milligrams, and with schizophrenia, typically you're going above three milligrams. And so number four, is Raylar addicting? And the answer is no, it is not addicting. However, you're gonna to wanna to take caution as to not stop it abruptly, advise your provider and taper off slowly, even though Raylar does have a very long half-life and the half-life actually can last up to a week or even more, so it stays in your system pretty long-term, which means it is forgiving if you miss a dose. However, there are some reports of patients who abruptly stop it having some rebound psychosis or rebound symptoms. So it's always prudent to taper off of any of these medications very slowly, and that's typically due to neuroadaptation. And so what about number five, those side effects? What are the side effects of Raylar? Well, the side effects that have been reported more commonly, and this is greater than 5%, um, in incidence and twice as that of placebo are the following. So we have the extra pyramidal symptoms, which are like those movement type disorders like tardive dyskinesia, movements of the mouth, face, upper extremities, as well as Parkinsonism type symptoms, which are those pill rolling movements, shuffling of the gait, and even some tremor like movements. Akathisia can also occur. And this is that agitated restlessness where you're pacing back and forth. And the akathisia and extra pyramidal symptoms that were commonly seen as side effects were actually seen in the larger dosages and in patients with schizophrenia or bipolar mania. And so um, therefore, it is pretty dose dependent, um, these side effects. Then there's restlessness, agitation, nausea, vomiting, or constipation, increase in appetite, though really no change in weight, some somnolence or fatigue, as well as dizziness. And so getting back to that weight gain, it's actually less common than the other atypical antipsychotics to have weight gain on Vralar. It's also less common to have that metabolic syndrome. However, it's still important to make sure you're getting your labs checked. Now, this is very similar to Latuda. So if you've seen my video on Latuda, I talk about how Latuda also has very minimal impact on weight. And in fact, with Latuda, some reports of weight loss. Now with Vralar, are, there have been reports of some weight gain and this was variable and it was two to three percent of weight gain that was seen in patients with bipolar or major depressive disorder and as you increase the dosages um, that are required for schizophrenia you saw a jump to eight percent of reports of weight gain in the schizophrenia population however the placebo reports of weight gain were anywhere from one to five percent and now what about those rare and dangerous side effects well, there are the black box warnings for number one is a suicidal ideation, which can occur anytime you're uh, having any antidepressant effects. So this is typically seen in the younger population, um, the pediatric young adults, 24 years and younger. And then there's that black box warning with all of the atypical antipsychotics of cerebral vascular accidents um, or stroke or even uh, myocardial infarctions like heart attacks, which can occur in the elderly elderly population that have dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And so it's not really advised for treating those behavioral symptoms in that population, though some may providers may choose to use that, it's important to weigh the risk versus the benefit. And then there's the warning for neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is an emergency, and this can happen with any of the atypical antipsychotics, where you'll get a high fever, some muscle rigidity, um, perhaps some delirium, as well as autonomic instability or variables in your heart rate and blood pressure. And then there's the white blood cell count irregularities. So again, making sure that you're getting your blood levels checked pretty regularly while on medication, um, as well as orthostatic hypotension and syncope where you can uh, faint very easily or have a change in blood pressure um, as you change positions and get from sitting to standing or lying down to standing. And in that case, I always recommend patients to dangle their feet at the side of the bed when they first wake up uh, just before um, getting up out of bed to help improve the circulation relation to their brain. Also, the risk of seizures is a factor um, because any antipsychotics can actually decrease the seizure threshold, making you more prone to seizures. So if you have a seizure disorder, uh, just talk it over with your provider on whether or not this medication would be right for you. And so number six, what about drug interactions? 
Well, Raylar is metabolized by the liver enzyme pathway CYP3A4. And so you do have to be careful with inhibitors and inducers of that enzyme or substrate. And so um, when you're looking at inhibitors, if it's inhibiting the metabolism, then it's gonna to accumulate to higher dosages of Raylar in your system and you may need lower dosages or may need to cut back on that inhibitor or stop taking that inhibitor altogether. Again, this has to be reviewed with your provider. Now with the inducers, it's going to rapidly metabolize Raylar, meaning that you may need a higher dose of Raylar or may need to adjust that medication. So also keep in mind that grapefruit and grapefruit juice is an inhibitor or strong inhibitor of this 3A4. And so um, you might wanna avoid taking grapefruit or grapefruit juice. You would also want to avoid other medications that decrease the seizure threshold as that can make you more prone to seizures. You also want to look out for um, lowering your blood pressure too much or that orthostatic hypotension. And so if you're taking some blood pressure medications, um, Freylar can actually increase um, that benefit of those blood pressure medications. And so you may need a lower dose of your blood pressure medication. So run that by your provider. And then also with Parkinson's drugs, you may not be able to take Raylar because it's going to be doing the opposite of the Parkinson's drugs. And so again, just run that by your provider if you're taking medications for Parkinson's. And so now my final thoughts on Raylar. Well, Raylar is actually a very good medication uh, for the treatment of bipolar and bipolar mania, mixed episodes, and even uh, bipolar depression. Um, that's where I've used it the most. And um, it's also now, of course, being used as an adjunct to major depressive disorder and has a lot of efficacy and research out there on the use for this population as well. The only thing about Raylar that we have to take caution with is the movement disorders, the extra pyramidal symptoms, and even that akathisia, because the percentages of that can be very high and commonly seen, like I mentioned in the side effects section. And so you just have to monitor this very closely. And so if you're experiencing this, you may actually benefit from taking either a lower dose or even dosing every other day. I've actually found that to be effective in reducing those symptoms of agitation, restlessness, um, or even akathisia. If the medication is really helping someone, we'll try uh, reducing it or even doing every other day dosing uh, to still get the benefit of the medication, but decreasing those side effects. So that's something to talk about with your provider. Now, another thing about Raylar is that it's still branded and so there's no generic for it. So this is another one of those medications where you may have to jump through hoops um, if you have insurance to get coverage for it. Or if you don't have insurance, you're gonna pay out of pocket, which is gonna be very expensive. Um, however, Raylar does have a savings program. Uh, so go ahead and make sure to check that out. If you think that you wanna try Raylar, look up their savings program to see if that's something that um, then you would be able to afford. So that wraps up my overview on Raylar. Have you had any experience with taking Raylar? If so, go ahead and share it with us in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.